Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be talking about mock trades. And not just any mock trades, bad mock trades. Actually, I don't know. I haven't read this article yet, but I have seen one of the trades listed in this article. And God, it makes me, it makes me sickly, right? And I've seen some of the reaction online. And not a lot of people are friends of this or fans of this article, I guess I should say. So we're going to dive into it. Shout out to our good friends over at Bleach Report. Shout out to Zach Buckley, who created this. It's not easy making mock trades. So, you know, I get that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm supportive of that. But we're going to go in. We're going to go in on them anyway. If you're wondering why we're doing this, we are in the depths of hell when it comes to the NBA offseason. There is nothing going on. The FIBA World Cup's been great. But just in terms of NBA news, there is nothing. And just to drive home the point of how bored everyone is, Team Reeves and Kai Legacy were both trending across the United States on Twitter last night for hours because they were battling back and forth to see which side had the most insane fan base. Okay, it even got so bad, Vengeance Wood, Christian Wood's number one fan on the internet, created the Wood Wigglers, which is a sentence I didn't even know was possible to say. So let's get into it. Realistic trades that would shock the NBA in 2023, 2024. We'll be the judges of that in terms of realism. Immediately, the first trade I see I don't like, and I'll explain why in a second. Bulls break bank for a point guard. Hawks build around DeJounte Murray. So immediately, I, I hate that. The idea of building around DeJounte Murray in the year of our Lord 2023 is sickening. I liked that trade for Atlanta a lot at the time. I was very interested to see what DeJounte Murray would look like off ball. And the Hawks desperately needed another guy, another guy who was capable of handling the ball and playing off Trey Young. But it was just not good. He was not very good at it. it I didn't like the taste that left in my mouth. Okay, like I, I just at this point in time, I don't know how I feel about DeJounte Murray. Personally, I don't even think I like him as a player. I don't like his game offensively. The, you know, constant isolations and long twos, inefficient offensive game. I don't like that at all. I didn't think he was very good off ball. And he's incredibly overrated defensively. The Hawks were better when Trey Young was on the floor without DeJounte Murray last year. So I already dislike it for the Hawks, but let's see what they would get in return. Trey Young and Garrison Matthews to the Bulls. Hawks get Lonzo Ball, who might ne never play again. We don't know. Patrick Williams, Kobe White, Dalen Terry, and two first-round picks and a pick swap. So Patrick Williams is the centerpiece of this trade, right? He's going on year four. We don't know who the hell this guy is. He's one of these players where uh, the idea of him does not match reality, right? The idea is great. Oh, my God, Patrick Williams, the baby claw. Like, he can be great defensively. He can give him the ball offensively. He can do X, Y, and Z. We haven't seen it. We don't know if that's real. We don't know if that exists, okay? Kobe White's a cool player. Dalen Terry looks like he's probably going to be a bust. Like, he, he just doesn't look like he's an NBA player at all. So, if I'm the Hawks, I'm giving up a top five offensive player for a guy who might never play again and it's just a complete and total question mark and then two first round picks and a pick swap. I want more. I need more. It doesn't really, I don't even get why the Hawks would trade Trey Young or why Trey Young would want to trade at this point. But for Chicago, I mean, you get a point guard, but I'm just thinking about the defense of Trey Young, Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and Nikola Vucevic. <laughs> Like, how many how many points is that team giving up? I mean, it's going to be numbers we didn't even know existed. Spurs snag a co-star. Timberwolves retool. All right, here's a Carl Anthony Towns trade. The Spurs get Carl Anthony Towns. The Timberwolves get Keldon Johnson, Devontae Graham, Campaign, who I honest to God was forgot. I forgot he was on the Spurs. A first-round pick in 2024. That's top six protected from Toronto. And a first-round pick in 2025 from Atlanta. All right, so immediately... I don't know what Carl Anthony Towns' market is. Like, I have no clue. Is it robust? Are there teams out there willing to give up three, four picks for a guy like Carl Anthony Towns? Or is there no market whatsoever? This is a guy who's going to be making $60 million a year, damn near, whenever his contract extension kicks in. So in my brain, we don't even know if Carl Anthony Towns is a winning basketball player. Like, from what we have seen from him over the past few years, it's tough to make the argument that he's going to help your team become a contender. And because of that, am I, I don't want to give up a bunch of picks. I don't want to pay him $60 million a year. At the same time, I thought Rudy Gobert's market was going to be kind of trash just because of how much money he was owed. And they, we all know what the Utah Jazz got in return for him. When I look at it, this trade actually kind of makes some sense. Like Keldon Johnson for the Spurs, I feel like, from what I understand, Spurs fans do not view him the same way people on the outside do. Where people on the outside, obviously, we don't watch too many Spurs games. They're like, yeah, Keldon Johnson's a good player. And Spurs fans are like, yeah... He wasn't very good at all this past year. And then Devontae Graham is just kind of whatever, campaign, whatever. And then two protected picks, or two picks that aren't even your own, I guess. I, I kind of like the swing for them. I kind of like the upside there. Cat can stretch the floor. He can play next to a shot blocker in Wimby. So, like, the biggest weakness in Cat's game, Wimby can make up for it. And ideally, Wimbenyama is somebody who can shoot and space the floor. So, the fit might be better than the fit we see with Cat next to Rudy Gobert. 
It's actually kind of interesting. If I'm the Timberwolves and I'm looking to trade Cat, this is a good return. Just give me anything I can get pretty much. Lillard lands north of the border. Blazers land a lot of assets. All right, so here's a Damian Lillard trade where he goes to Toronto, of all places. All right. Portland receives Scotty Barnes, Grady Dick, Dennis Schroeder, Chris Boucher, and Thaddeus Young, as well as a 2028 first round pick. That's it? Is this... This package isn't even better than Miami. So... Is this is this a hypothetical scenario? Damian Lillard says, you know what? Fuck it. I want to be in Toronto. Which, why would he do that? No offense to the great city of Toronto. No offense to, no offense to the six, right? But, like, is is this team better than any other team he's been on? Scotty Barnes would be gone. Grady Dick would be gone. It would be Damian Lillard, Pascal Siakam, Gary Trent Jr., uh, Jakob Pertle. Like, that's, I mean... But if the Heat can give you, what is it, three, four, five picks, as well as Hami Hakez, who they just drafted in the first round, and Mikola Jovic, who's had a great World Cup, like well, that, that package is just way better than this. Scotty Barnes is good. Don't get me wrong. Grady Dick probably will be good. But like, and then just one other first round pick. But this doesn't make any sense. And then we have the trade that caused me to want to create this video. 76ers Mavericks engineer the ultimate challenger trade. Philadelphia 76ers receive Kyrie Irving. Dallas Mavericks receive James Harden. Just why? Why? I'm just I'm 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 just really trying to understand it. I'm really trying to process it and understand it and, and get it. I don't think this trade makes any sense whatsoever now, but there was at least some kind of argument for it before free agency started when we had like no idea where Kyrie Irving was going to go and James Harden just opted in and demanded a trade. Like there was a, oh, well, could there be a signing trade Kyrie for James Harden? I didn't like it then. I hated it then, but it at least made some sense. Now it makes zero sense. Okay. In this tidbit right here, the Mavs also may not feel great about their present with Irving. Yes, they just gave him a three-year, $120 million deal, but they may have felt they had no other choice after losing Jalen Brunson for nothing last summer. They just paid him $40 million fucking dollars. They didn't have to do that. Like, they didn't need to do that. They could have done this, probably. Like, the Sixers would for sure do this. They could have done this. Why would they do it now? And the Kyrie Irving fit next to Luka. The Mavericks lost a lot of games last year, and there were a lot of different reasons for that. Kyrie Irving's fit next to Luke offensively really was not one of them. That duo was dynamic together. They were electric. They were dynamite. And that's because Kyrie is a very good off-ball guard. Like, he has spent the vast majority of his career playing as the number two guy. Playing as, even in some cases, the number three guy when he was on Brooklyn. Great off-ball player. He's a great secondary ball handler. He just fits really well offensively next to Luka. How on earth would James Harden fit next to Luka? Luka. Like, we already have the better version of James Harden. Like, we already have him. This is like that, oh, we have McDonald's at home meme, where the, your kid's like, hey, mom, can we get McDonald's? Uh, like, we, can we get McDonald's? You say, no, we have McDonald's at home. But in this case, the McDonald's at home is a ribeye steak seared by Gordon Ramsay. Why the fuck would I want McDonald's if I have that at home? I do think it's hilarious imagining what that Luca Harden backcourt would look like. Like, <laughs> I just, my God, it would be a painful watch. It, I'd watch all 82 games because I'm a sucker, but it would be it would be a painful experience. And you know what? I'm getting tired of this shit. Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, the Dallas Mavericks organization, it's time to put your foot down. This is getting out of control, all right? The Mavericks are going to be good next year. Stamp it. Kyrie's going to be good next year. Stamp it. Kyrie's going to retire a Maverick. Stamp it. Kyrie's going to retire with two more rings. Stamp it. Don't hold me to any of that, please.